The disease influence has had an impact uh, down through history. Some of them quite obvious, like the 1918-19 pandemic that uh, led to the ending of World War I and made a contribution in a lot of other ways. And one of the contributions that the influenza pandemic of 1918-19 made was it created a heightened surveillance system to monitor the mutations in influenza. In 1976, this surveillance system, manned primarily by the Centers for Disease Control, detected in an army recruit in Fort Dix, New Jersey, a new strain of influenza, a mutant strain. Uh, the recruit who had it passed away from the influenza infection, and when initial investigation into this strain occurred, it looked curiously like the same strain that caused the pandemic of 1918-19. Well, it doesn't take long to have a finding like that become sensationalized, which it did. And as it leaked out into the news media, it turned out that Gerald Ford was beginning his election campaign. And as the sitting president at the time, uh, was caught in kind of a conundrum, a, a you can't win policy of we have to protect the American people from this possible devastating pandemic disease, but also, as with any vaccination program, there are some side effects. Well, finally, the Center for Disease Control director sent an action memo to Gerald Ford suggesting that uh, this could well be a very difficult influenza epidemic. And uh, at the behest of this and the prodding of a lot of individuals, uh, the legislature enacted and Gerald Ford signed the National Influenza Immunization Program. One of the very few times in the history of the United States when we tried to do a mass immunization, tried to immunize everybody in the country, and of course it was a huge undertaking. And as the program proceeded along through that spring and summer, about over 50 million vaccines were given. But the CDC, as they continued to investigate this strain, discovered over time that it wasn't exactly the 1918-19 pandemic strain. In fact, this particular mutant strain of influenza kind of faded off into the distance as other strains became more evident that they would be creating health problems for the next influenza season. In the meantime, as these vaccines were given, uh, it became obvious that there were some side effects from this mass immunization program that had been unanticipated. For example, Rye syndrome, a disease found in kids up to about the age of uh, 18 caused by uh, exposure to influenza or measles. This is an after effect of it, began to occur. Dozens of these cases, which were initially diagnosed as uh, drug overdoses in these young kids, began to be linked to influenza. We still talk about Rice syndrome today. It's the reason we don't give aspirin to kids when they have viral infections. And Guillain-Barre syndrome, a little-known syndrome called ascending paralysis or ascending polio. All of a sudden, we had several hundred cases, and the epidemiologists began to link this to the vaccination program. On top of that, uh, if you go into the city of New York and administer 100,000 vaccinations for influenza, the likelihood of a few of those people dying within a week is pretty good. Unfortunately, the news media picked up on that and began to serendipitously link that to the influenza program. Well, this created a lot of consternation and eventually the uh, influenza vaccination program was halted, but not before Gerald Ford took a pretty significant hint. And this was brought up a number of times, as I mentioned initially, you know, uh, poor President Ford was caught uh, between a rock and a hard place. And unfortunately, both of these made a contribution to his uh, lack of being reelected. Influenza and Gerald Ford. You can make a pretty interesting case that it had an effect on the outcome of that election.